Titans. I'm kind of really interested to see that rise ban. Just just because Mimer, he didn't mm. perform well against EG, didn't perform that well against Meteor Makers. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say he's a terrible player or anything, but obviously it wasn't a champion he liked to play, as you mentioned before. But to take that away when you know what to expect from that in the top lane, it's a little bit interesting. Well, we saw it with Meteor Makers when Kubon was playing it. It's like, Ryze will become a phenomenal force towards the end of the mm. game. Is the game going to get that long? You hope not, probably, if there's a rise on the opposition team. But there's always a danger. Twisted Fate being taken away from Ninja and Pajamas, actually. Didn't want Bjergsen, possibly, to have that one. Cassidy removed from Peke. No backdoor in today. Thank you very much, Peke. It does leave a number of champions open, though, for Soaz, Peke, Bjergsen. They've all got signature champions they like to run. And they're all out there. A lot of AD carries as well. Nobody really banning the AD carries anymore. Draven, of course, used to be one of the target mm -hmm. bans for Freeze, but Freeze himself saying this week, not going to be playing Draven anymore. Yeah, he it was, it wasn't too fond of it there in that mm. game. But then again, he was in a 2v2 and he kind of wanted to be mm. in a 2v1 lane. But the Twisted Fate ban, he's been banner picked in 97.5% of all the games in European LCS so far in the summer split, but only has a 50% win ratio, which is kind of really interesting. But with the Fiddlesticks ban, they want to take that away from uh, Deficio, who actually has been practicing that quite a bit yeah. over this past week. So he's, he's, been, he's you got to be careful what you spam on Twitter, guys, because people <laughs> take note. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's actually really not smart. But maybe it was a mind game. Maybe he's like, I'm gonna make them yeah. think I play fiddle six, so they take it away because they're in third place or third or fourth place currently. Like they're one or two wins away from getting towards that top of the table, and I'll take anything they can get. And then of course the Shen Band coming in. They don't want to let Yellow Star play in the top lane. Well, Soaz has selected Thresh. We believe for Yellow Star. We'll see whether that remains <laughs> the same or not. Whether they do switch anything around. I don't think they will this time around. Looks like Maluno may well get his job and locked in instantly. So. Yes, he is, and that is going to be Varus for Freeze. I'm actually a little bit surprised at not seeing Aatrox. We saw Luna play him mm -hmm. twice last week. We saw Sinai play him once as well. Obviously, it's a kind of a niche champion, but Jarvan, it's kind of... It's been like... For me, it's been the trademark jungler for NIP, even back in the, in the spring split with Sven Skarin. But he didn't have amazing stats on Aatrox. That's possibly nope. why he slid back into Jarvan. Slid, I like that. Yeah, QE'd back into Jarvan. Um, but yeah, so I mean, Jarvan, he always offers a lot. And if you pair that in with Avaris, you have the lockdown of the Shannon Corruption, you have the lockdown of his Cataclysm. You can really keep a team, um, you know, just away from you or, or pretty much lock them down long enough to win a fight. But I don't know. I mean, Freeze, we haven't seen him on Varus too much. I'm gonna see how well he's gonna do on this. Well, Lee Sin being locked in along with Kennen. So, Cyanide on Lee Sin, we haven't seen that for a while. I hate Lee Sin. Oh, I hate Lee Sin. Yeah, actually, have we seen him? I'm trying to think if we've seen him on Lee Sin. I know we've seen uh, Dexter on Lee Sin uh, recently over on Lemon Dog's uh, camp, but I'm actually, I'm, I'm not really sold if that will be in the jungle though. I don't, I don't know, it's not really to me the type of champion he would play, but with a Kennen being locked in, yeah, most likely will be there. Well, Bjergsen on your screen right now, waiting to see what he's going to select. And freeze, of course. It's going to be the probably leaving the mid lane until the last. Freeze. Typing something in. What is it? It's Nami by looks of it to me. No, that's no, that's There's Nami. There we go. You saw it right. Yeah. I, I, thought, my, I thought the old <laughs> eyes were playing up. <laughs> no. I think my You eyes... guys may have spotted that already. Oh, jeez. Did I leave the stove? <laughs> <laughs> Did I leave the oven on? Oh, that was that was a great picture. That was a great picture. Wasn't what that I was. was thinking at the time. <laughs> but so we have Zach being locked in and Obviously, Zac is one of those champions you can run in the jungle, which Maluno has done before, or in that top end on a Mimer, which isn't necessarily the champion he liked to play, or at least what he's been vocal about. And of course, Sifisu has fantastic stats on Nami. could be a really strong pick for him as a support role. And as we're seeing on the other side, you know, Fnatic, they, Vayne's open. And we never see Vayne open anymore, just because of how strong she is, how people really enjoy playing her, really start to play her again. But looks like they will lock that in. Well, we've already seen Pete playing an incredible Vayne yeah. earlier on today. And actually, we were saying to Crepo at the time, it's like, don't remember actually seeing him play in Vayne for a very long time. I think he played it once in the spring split. And it's a champion that is pretty much 100% picked band in uh, North America. Right? Yeah, it's, it's just... The ultimate, or not the ultimate, the, the late game power of Vayne is just ridiculous. If you put her in an easy 2v1 lane, you're going to have that guaranteed farm. You're going to have that guaranteed strength. And as long as your team can protect you, you're going to be doing a lot of damage, which is what Doublelift got really famous for with those Vayne mechanics. Yeah, absolutely. And well, technically, Reckless coming into Fnatic soon. He was made fam very famous for it. And back and forth action they had at IPL5. But what are we seeing here between these two teams? Because this is a... An interesting Fnatic, a very aggressive Fnatic team. It looks like Fnatic, they want to just catch someone. Whether it be kicking someone out uh, of the enemy team back into your own team, catch them with a hook, catch them with a charm, and then just blow them up right away. 
I, I think that's exactly what they want to go for. The cannon kind of doesn't 100% fit, but yeah, due to what NIP is going to do it and how they engage upon you with the Zag, with the uh, the Zed, with the Jarvan, it's going to help counter, uh, counter them a little bit, at least cancel out their uh, their CC. And then of course, on NIP side, I mean, they just want to go for some team fights. They want to hope Bjergsen can get that 1v1 off or the split pushing happening, which he was so famous for back in the spring split on his Zed, on, on Kha'Zix, any kind of assassin champions and allow him to just pretty much force the other team to react to him to say, hey, you have to come fight me, and if you do, you have to send more than one guy at me. Well, we are about to get underway. Will Fnatic continue the chase on Lemon Dogs to try and get hold of that top slot? Alternate, of course, already stretched themselves into second place, so Fnatic trying to give chase, and they don't want to let a two-game slip get away from them. They're going to be playing three games this weekend and five games in the Super Week, and that's where things could really stretch out. But everybody wants to come away with a perfect weekend here in week eight. I'm so scared right now. Yellowstar, I've never seen him that serious before. He was so concentrated, so focused, like he knows what's on the line right now. And when he's playing Thresh, the ability to make plays is just ridiculous. If you land that one hook, you can set your entire team up for honestly a very early first blood if they do want to go for any sort of invade right now. Well, they are starting to buy. What are we picking up? I can see Yellowstar, he's getting all his items. And we're going to be going into the game. You can see, ladies and gentlemen, we are going live. This is game four of week eight here. Just another week remaining after this one. Twelve games, though, this weekend. And this is just the fourth of them. Another six to come tomorrow. Another two after this one, actually. So it's going to be a long night, ladies and gentlemen, here in Cologne. For now, the blue team, Ninjas in Pajamas as the red team. And as it stands... I don't think we're going to see a great deal of starts. Of course, it could be a late invade coming. I'm just looking across the positionings. It's simply three wards being placed out. No harassment, really, for those wards either. We have seen in a couple of games already today. And Bjergsen doing a, a boogie. <laughs> He's doing something there. I don't know what that is. But we do have a lot of wards actually being put down for next side. They have both sides of middle covered right now, which is kind of interesting. But if you look at how the lane ups, or lanes are kind of set up right now, it looks like we might see that 2v1 in the bottom lane over on NIP's side. And right now, Mimer, he's set up towards that top side to... I, honestly, I don't even know what he will be going up against just yet because Fnatic has yet to make their move. Well, we can see Soaz down in this tri-bush. Yellowstar's joining him and... They are going for a bit of a late invade. I'm not sure whether that's just a simply a ward placement. Yes, it is. Just simply a ward placement. We do see Cyanide sat waiting around. Nobody really going for anything, so it's going to be a red buff start off for Cyanide. I'm really interested to see how Cyanide's going to do on Lee Sin. It's a champion I don't recall actually seeing him play at all in the LCS. I'm trying to think back to the spring split. Whether he used to play, I don't think Lee Sin was even played in the spring split. If maybe just once, that's that's actually a very good point. Yeah. So I mean, he's just kind of showing that he's expanding his champion pool, or not even expanding. Like we know he can play Lee Sin, but to do it on a competitive level in LCS when so much is on the line really shows his confidence in it. And yeah, I completely agree. That Doran's blade start. He wants some early game aggression. He wants to make some plays happen. And with all the words expended in the beginning by NIP, that gives him a good opportunity to make it happen. Well, as we see, nothing really coming from level one fight, so sure enough, it is going to be a 2v2 in the bottom lane. Yellowstar and Pushu. Pushu on Vayne. We'll see how he stands up to Freeze's Varus, his, his new champion of choice, effectively, after Draven changes in 3.9. Yellowstar getting caught in the Aqua Prison straight away. Takes a bit of free harassment. Cyanide over on the blue buff, and Maluna on the blue buff is his own, so no invades at all from either jungler going about their route. So are we expecting Soaz and Cyanide, uh, Maluna, sorry, yeah. to just try and farm as quick as possible? No, we're expecting Maluna to gank bottom. I mean, we already see on the minimap, but because he started red buff shows that he's gonna gank bottom. He wants to shut down Vayne early on, shut down Pushu, give his bottom lane a very easy time. Because honestly, Vayne, not that strong early on, does have a sort of escape with that tumble, but just his jungle path was just kind of showing you that he wants to go for it. He hasn't been spotted just yet. He's sneaking into this bush. If he can land that combo and then a bubble right after that, that would be first blood. Once that minion goes down, you expect him to take that a little bit of a step closer. It's going to be all about that Aqua Prison. If it lands, expect him to make his move. That Dragon Strike standard combo slides in there. Or the QW as it's easier known as. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to see that actually Cyanide it looks like instead of actually going for a gank, Maluna's prepared for a counter gank here um, on the Cyanide, who's already heading towards bottom. He's just been farming up. He hasn't visited top lane, hasn't visited middle just yet. He's trying to get, I believe, his early level six. He's already double the CS of Maluno here, and this is a lot of time to be committing right now out of him. And well, it, it, it makes sense because... 
everyone that plays Lee Sin goes ganking at level two or three normally. Mm -hmm. Instead, Cyanide is farmed out to level four and gone back to base, so he's not going for the early gank, kind of catching Maluna off guard, I feel. This is a lot of time to commit, but I mean, luckily for him, yeah, he's holding back his bottom lane in terms of experience a little bit. He's getting caught up uh, in terms of that as well, but none of the other lanes are having a tough time. I mean, you see Bjergsen farmed up race, you see in the top lane, that Mimer is all alone, right, uh, all alone there, as Soaz did go back and buy up early. And he's still lingering around there, like you say, Soaz went wow, back. He's got a lot of time. A sword and shield, so he's uh, a true warrior in that top lane. And he's going to be up against the green blob, so... I can't think of any film references there. Maluna does finally go for it. Oh, the Aqua Prison not going to land it. Instead, he turns it back around. Cyanide comes in, gets the kill, and now they're going to turn it on towards... Freeze, can they catch on towards him? Bush is going to come in there. What? Cyanide missed that by a mile. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really bad cue. <laughs> I'm glad you said it, not me, but that was so much time to commit by Maluno just to have your double bus taken, just for you to die, give up first blood, and get signed at a refresh on his doubles. That was it, was, it was good in theory, but I think he just committed a little bit too much time. It was a good combo knocking up Yellow Star, but it was all a bait, and the bubble didn't land right after that. So fantastic job by Sunai to be there at the right time. And Defiso, he's still trying to be aggressive bottom. Still trying to make the plays and... Honestly, once that first bird had already passed by, I think they should have realized we need to step away from this one because Pushu has the bit between his teeth. Fortunately, though, it was Cyanide that picked up the kill and not Pushu. Pushu on vain. If they could get him snowballing early, it would be telling times for ninjas in pajamas, but they wisely step back. And at the moment, the mid lane. We haven't really talked a great deal about this one. Peke has just gone back. The top killer in the LCS, in the European LCS at least, and uh, was being challenged by Creaton earlier on today with his stats, but uh, he went back, got himself a Doran's ring, but he's got double cloth armor as well because he's up against Bjergsen on Zed. Yeah, he's going for the secret arm guards. He has to get that zone against him. He has to have the armor, or Bjergsen, who has 24 plat or flat armor pennies, enough for me to say, will just shred through him. And honestly, the, the kill that went down, it did go over to Cyanide instead of push you, but I actually, I, I kind of like that. I mean, it would be great to get on either one of your carries, just, just that fact. But to give it to Elise Sin, who, if he doesn't get anything going early on, he kind of falls off a little bit later, you know? So it, it, it's definitely going to help him out, and I don't think they're going to care too much in the end, but... I bet Pushu's like, come on, let me have that. I wanted double buffs. I wanted the red. And of course, another item that always helps out when you do have a Lee is the fact that he goes for that side stone, gives you a bunch more free wards around him. Well, not free, because you've technically paid for it. It's like a down payment. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much gold is it? Like maybe five or six, then you finally do start to make money off mm. of the wards you put down. But also, it makes it so he can ward up the enemy jungle. Double buffs haven't respawned just yet for NIP. If he wants to, he can be aggressive, put the wards down, which right now, Yellowstar's already doing at the blue buff for NIP. And he can kind of counter that because because of the Q and how it works, the percent damage you do when they're missing health, you can steal things away so quickly. And let's talk about Mima versus Soaz in the top lane. We can see Soaz on your screen right now. Actually pretty close in terms of CS at the moment. Soaz is obviously going to get a bit of a lead because he's got the wave pushed up against his tower, so he's going to clear that one out. But Mima not doing a bad job here. I remember seeing Soaz versus, was it Wicked the other week? When there was the exact same matchup of Cannon versus Zack, and it was a definitely much bigger story for Soaz. Yeah, I mean, I'm right. when he's been so vocal about playing Assassins, he's definitely doing a great job. He's keeping up with Soaz, and with that early Doran shield, it helps mitigate a lot of harass that he does early on to him. Helps give him that extra regen, on top of the fact that the extra health it gives him makes it so his blob will heal him for a little bit more. And as long as he can keep this pace up, like he'll be really effective in his team fights. However, if you don't shut Soaz down, if he gets that early Zonias, if he gets some sort of a lead against you, his team fight presence is just going to be ridiculous. Tell a lie with Gambit, I believe, he was doing it against. And I recall he switched it up and he went AD Cannon, didn't he? And then, yeah, so oh, yeah. yeah, he did. Yes, he did. So, as it stands, though, the bottom lane is fairly close. And that's that's a danger sign there, the fact that a vein is fairly close to Varus this early on in the game. Eight minutes gone, the Blue Wolves both have respawned, being picked up by their relevant AP mids, or AD mid, I guess you could say, in terms of Bjergsen. Will eventually be picked up by Peke. He's took his time there. Let's sign out, tank that one out for a bit longer than maybe was necessary. I haven't seen anyone go too aggressive in this mid lane yet. Both do have their ultimates available, of course. Peke, if he does land that charm, it will be painful on Bjergsen, but the same could be said if the death mark gets thrown onto Peke. Peke is going to be hoping he gets get that charm out to delay it. As I say that, they thought about going for it there, but actually, Bjergsen getting up behind Bjerg Peke yet. Does put a bunch of damage down, switches out the charm, misses, that's wow. going to be Peke dead. Deathmark will finish him off, splat. 
And that is Peke with a significant death in the mid lane. <laughs> we were just saying about it, if he misses that charm, it's going to kill him, and sure enough, he did. That is why I don't play Zed, because I can never make a play like that. That was phenomenal, dodging the charm with his ultimate, then to get in there, get the ignite down, get his spilled water cutlass off on him, and burst him down from pretty much 100% to zero. That is ridiculous, and considering how strong Bjergsen is on Zed, how powerful he is at, at just split pushing and 1v1-ing, it's going to make him a huge step for Fnatic to have to deal with. So good start for Bjergsen in that mid lane to get that kill over Peke. But the bottom lane has been Fnatic. They have been in the driving seat so far ever since Cyanide came and countered Maluno at the start. Maluno himself has just been on a bit of a farming run since then to maybe get himself back going. You can see he's slightly behind at the moment, but what I am seeing is how far ahead Actually, it's tell a lie, they're both eight, and it's just an angle on my screen. I was thinking 11 to 7? What is going on there? But it's eight. <laughs> it's eight. <laughs> that would be something I've ridiculous. I've been done so many times by this screen. I'm, I'm going to adjust my seat. In fact, I'm just going to stand up. I've done it. He's doing it, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to stand up. So, <laughs> yeah, um, right now, I was actually thinking about the bottom lane for Pushu, because he went double Doran's Blade into a Biltron of Cutlass just now, and it's kind of necessary. I mean, you don't necessarily want to go for the double Doran's Blade if you don't have to, but the fact that if he gets hit with the Chain of Corruption, that would be followed up with the Nami Tidal Wave, with the Aqua Prison, and you would be bursted down from 100% to zero. But now expect he's getting ganked middle. 100% to zero, not quite going to work out this time around. Peke does survive another assault from Bjergsen. Hadn't quite got his full combo landed, and he got the Seeker's Arm Guard completed as well for that. Just a little bit more defense there. Yellow Star manages to hold off an entire Creep Wave and keep them away from the tower there. Very nicely done. So holds away from two players, pulls the entire wave up towards the top, so the tower doesn't hit. Pushu comes in, gets himself some large free farm. And that's something we don't talk about with the All-Star too much, is the fact that he was an AD carry player. He knows like what an AD carry would love to have at this situation or at another situation, and the fact that he was able to do that, hold the minion wave off, just so Pushu wouldn't miss out on farm, miss out on experience, like that was just so well coordinated. And right now, Sunday, he's heading down towards bottom. Yellow Star already made NFP be very defensive there, just with the lantern coming down, since I didn't know where it was, but now, Peke's getting ganked middle by Maluno, but he did force a flash, so now Bjergsen, when he returns, since he had that blue buff, his ultimate's gonna be on a quicker cooldown, he might be able to take him down. Well, that's another Cataclysm there, coming out, so we'll keep our eye on that one. Brutalizer now being picked up by Bjergsen in that mid lane, so he is gonna be doing some dangerous, dangerous levels of damage. He's not gonna head down to the bottom. We are seeing Maluno coming down, puts himself a pink ward. He's gonna spot out Fanatic's warden. We do see Yellow Star and Pushu coming up to try and defend that one out. <clears throat> and the pink war battle begins, and Fnatic take first blood. <laughs> <laughs> and it won't end anytime soon. And you know, looking over at Sana, he's playing Lee Sin, if we think about it, really differently. If you think to Aranea when he played Lee Sin back in the first couple of weeks and how it surprised everyone, he was very aggressive, trying to make plays happen right away. But Sana, he's just been farming up, because look at that difference that he currently has right now. And with Dragon Mean start up with no one in the vicinity for it for NIP, that will be the first drag of the game. It'll be a Pretty easy one at that as well. No real contestant coming from NIP instead, sticking in their lane. Soaz and Mima, actually Mima taking pretty low in that top, and Soaz does have his ultimate available, so Mima needs to be careful here. Of course, he's got his Let's Bounce as well, but Slicing Maelstrom's going to be doing some damage now, and they've both got their Haunting guys on, so they're both going to be looking at trying to out-damage one another. We'll see who wins out that battle. Peke without his blue buff on, because he did lose it pretty much shortly after getting it to Bjergsen. Has to be so, so careful. Just lingering off the side, though. Cyanide waiting to come in and help out in the top lane, though. So as forced to flash, gets away with it. But something important is that Bjergsen, he actually hit level 11 before x -Peke. And because of that, with his Ignite coming up, with his build toward a Cutlass, he can 100% to zero him. And with that pink ward coming down, he's trying to spot Cyanide from coming in, trying to maybe allow Maluna to come in there and help out. But I wouldn't be surprised in the next 30 seconds to a minute, we're going to see x -Peke die. Another one. And here it comes, maybe just right now. Is it going to be the time? Doesn't use his death mark. Kind of chunks him to half hit points. He's done this last time. It's coming, it's coming. It's definitely a coming, and Peke is well aware of this one. This time, Cyanide not close enough to get in and help and safeguard and get that shield on towards him. And you can see Peke, that's why he's desperately clearing them waves and thinking, yep, staying well away from you, Bjergsen, right now. Yeah, he, he has to, and that's just what that's just the power of Bjergsen getting that early kill on your lane. But right now, Sunny's coming in from the other side. Oh, no, just give him the blue buff over. I thought they were going to come in and go for that really uh, really quick gank onto him, but Bjergsen just going to shut the lane, go pick up his own blue buff, and 
I honestly, I can't say it enough, but he is just so dangerous in lane. If he decides to roam, which is what Bjergsen kind of used to do a lot in the spring split, doesn't do too much in the summer split anymore, and he can really punish a lot of lanes. And it's interesting, that's the, what we talked about, the freedom that Extinct had brought into the in team for Ninja and Pajamas. Bjergsen suddenly was a free man, effectively being able to do what he wanted in the team, wasn't all the pressure on him. We'll see whether that turns back around, though, with Mima mm. coming back in. Good Aqua Prism from Divisio, stopping Pushu, getting that... Uh, Three, I can never remember the silver bolts. Silver bolts. Never remember the exact name of the <laughs> proc on it, but that's silver bolts. Stacked up. Does a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely does, Demon. And one thing we haven't seen just yet coming out of NIP is their ultimates, which they have available. Neither has Fnatic in that bottom lane when they're already at level 9 at this point. And I'm a little surprised, but we do have Cyanide coming down. Actually, we do have Bojangles coming down for both teams. This could be another kill coming in very soon, and if Yellowstar can land that hook, it's going to be very dangerous. They have the pink ward down. They're going to go in. Yellowstar caught out of position. That's going to be the Cataclysm on him immediately, quickly. Pelts him back, and Maluno get the Ignite on him. It's not quite going to be enough. Chain of Corruption stops Cyanide where he stands, follows it while the piercing arrow, and they both, or all three of them, step away from that one. And a lot of ultimates being used, but not too many summoners. Yeah, we did see Yellowstar actually flash Ignite, but that's just about it. As uh, Luna was the one to flash away too, but Dirksy's coming down the top. Let me see a fight breaking out. Uh, it's going to skid a slicey Maelstrom. It may be enough to finish in. Certainly set off the passive. No, they're both going to walk away from this one. Both Ignites were used very low, though. Bjergsen heading in towards the bottom. Cyanide is there, just on the tower, lingering. And they are going to come around. They're going to try and catch out. Yellowstar caught in the Aqua Prison. He's going to go down, no doubt about that one. Bjergsen comes in, puts the death mark. Oh, death no! Mark. Still hasn't gone out. Good kick from Cyanide. Tries to launch it back in. Bjergsen taking very low. Cyanide with the Ignite. That's going to drop him low. Freeze turns it around. Great piercing arrow on towards Pushy. Flashes for it. Barrier comes in. Barrier oh. bait, maybe. No! Lands the hail of arrows. Manages to get the kill. And Freeze walks away like a boss. Just wow. Such a great play. And, and seeing Bjergsen commit his ultimate to Yellowstar, who's already going to die. But then for them to turn it around, pick up another kill, just... Wow, just great job by Freeze right there, showing his expertise of that virus, expertise of the range as well. And now Maluno, who has been trying to roam around, make some ganks happen, get a little bit of experience middle here. And I, I swear, whenever we see Bjergsen leave middle lane, someone should like cue the Jaws theme, because you know it's coming. He's gonna <laughs> go in for a kill, you just gotta, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> Someone's gonna make a video of that one now. I'm sure of it. He's gonna be running around. Shark like Bjergsen. And earlier on, when you mentioned both junglers in the bottom lane. I'm pretty sure you said Bojangles. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Anything I, possible. I was going to mention it, but then there was a 3v3 fight, so I had to ignore it. But Bojangles definitely came out. I was thinking, <laughs> what have you been doing earlier on? I don't know. Listening to a bit of, a bit of music. At the moment, though, this mid lane, Peke. He's the number one killer in the European LCS, but as it stands right now, he's the number one defender and having to be very passive against Bjergsen because Bjergsen, you can see again, he's roaming. He's going where he pleases. Ooh, he he's not caught. Mundo, but he is on Zed, and now they're going to both go into it. Can they 2v1 him? That's the question. He's going to try and turn this one back around on Peke. He takes him very low. Going to try and finish him off. He will pop him. He gets a kill, but nevertheless, Cyanide picks up the shutdown bonus. And with that kill, he made it so he had a shutdown bonus, so Sam was able to pick that up, but I am surprised that Xpeke was that aggressive, realizing that Bjergsen could do that much damage, but wow, and that's going to let Bjergsen know that they're definitely warding up against him. They're definitely trying to prevent him from roaming into this bottom and to really interact on there. So I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back to lane with maybe a pink ward, or maybe just takes an alternate pass. And Demon, honestly, look at that top lane in terms of CS. It is starting to snowball heavily in favor of Soaz, and the junglers haven't made, uh, paid too much attention up there. I think Maluno only ganked once. Yeah, this is what I mentioned before, and you know, the fact that he, he was in a similar matchup, and he, he does get a long way ahead. He really knows how to play Cannon very, very well, which I guess effectively is exactly the same as the Korean scene. He used to be such a popular champion. Honestly, he's one of those farmers that every top laner says he's just horrible to play against because you can't really stop a Cannon farming at all. And there's just no way around it. What I am interested in, though, is the 280 carries and how very close they are in terms of farm, which surely spells danger for Freeze. Yeah, actually, it's... it's yeah, okay, so in terms of farm, yes, it definitely does. Like, the fact that he doesn't have a huge lead over Pushu is definitely harming him quite a bit. But it all comes down to the CC that Fnatic ha or sorry, not Fnatic, the NFP has in the fight that Fnatic doesn't have. I and mean, yeah, you have the chem to stop him, but if Pushu gets locked down, any somewhat at all, all that farm, it's not going to mean too much if he can't escape, because he's not running to cleanse. So maybe an early QSS to just stay alive against the damage of 
Mimer or just to get out of the, the Vars ultimate or Nami, Aquapris would really save him. Not to mention Bjergsen, who is already 3-1. and one. He has the potential to burst, push you down in a 1-1-1 one, one, one fight. I'm going to check whether he's doing a Mundo face at the moment, because he really is going where he pleases. And he is finding kills every time he leaves that lane. Cyanide's going to be picking up that red buff. Let's see whether he goes on a mission trying to assassinate that bottom lane. Bottom lane is heavily warded, though. So he's going to have to be sneaky if he goes there. He's going to be picking golems up on route. Blue buff will be going across towards Peke once again. Let's so see if he can keep hold of it this time around. Because every time he seems to get it, it becomes a magnet for Bjergsen, who himself is over with Maluno and the rest of Ninjas in Pajamas taking the dragon. This will be the second one of the game. The first one, though, for NIP. But everyone's going to be here at this fight. They got to take it very quickly. They don't want to get engaged upon right after this fight. Looks like they should be able to lock it down, but they're getting flanked right now by uh, by Xpeke. Oh, he tried to jump his way in there using the safeguard, but NIP were ready and waiting for that one. Took it down very quickly. And Fnatic have to step away. Didn't quite get the timing right on that one, I feel. Yeah, a little unfortunate, but... I was looking at something, and I was thinking back to what I said earlier about the top lane, who's interacting with it. It's only been Maluno, and maybe Fnatic's not showing enough respect to Mimer right now, who, since they didn't bother ganking him, they just let Soaz 1v1 him, out farming him, and when it comes to team fights, Mimer could make some huge fights happen, as we think back to his game versus EG. Didn't do much in the team or in the, in the early laning phase, fell behind uh, Wicked and farm, but as the team fight started breaking out, he really started making those plays happen. The, the difference is, I mean, while Wiley Mimer's fairly new to the LCS. I'll have to come back to that in a moment, though, because Bjergsen's going to get aggressed on here. Slicing Maelstrom comes out, and again, he tries to turn it round back around on Peke. This time around, Soaz locks him up very nicely, and I believe the charm landed in that fight. So the point you were going to say over there? Mm -hmm. The point oh, I was going to say. I was actually really curious. We'll go like, back to talk it. About? Actually, I will talk about it. Mima versus Soaz. It's probably a fight that Soaz has had a lot of times, because mima has got three Challenger League champions in the, in the uh, solo queue. So Soaz probably has faced him quite a lot of time, so he's probably well aware of how he's going to play. But nevertheless, we have more fights happening. Top, middle, and bottom. It's all kicking off right now. Soaz, though, he's going to be the one they're trying to get on towards with the Ignite running. Mima lets him get away. Yeah. I mean, they knew Soaz didn't have that ultimate available. They wanted to make a play happen. They wanted to go for that kill, but he was able to escape. Still blinking helper now in the bottom lane. We saw Pusher actually get engaged upon, and he was able to survive as well. So they did at least push him out of lane. They're going to be able to do some damage onto this turret, though. I don't think they can take it just yet. And Sinai, he's circling around to go for a kill. And right now, expect him. They're doing what Fnatic typically does. Let him get a lot of farm. Let him start to make some plays happen. Split push a little bit. And Bjergsen just trying to go head-to-head -to -head against them. And trying to catch him out, but whether they will or not, it's another man I can't see. In the top lane now, Bjergsen's going to start eating up that farm. Let me make a race between two mid laners and see who can farm the most over here. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they probably made like a bet before the game started, but well, right now... What I was just about to say, sorry, is they've got a good counter now because yep. they have twos on his hourglasses. Exactly. That's a, that's a, they weren't totally in sync right now, That's exactly what I was going to say. Because if Zonis is done, that means Bjergsen's potential to 1v1 mm -hmm. him just completely went through the floor. It's yes. A, effectively an exhaust. I know what you're saying, yeah. Nullified him. Or... Uh, what was the other word? Not very uncommon or something like that. I, that's the one I believe I heard Stress using this morning. Hi, Stress. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, let's get back to NIP versus Fnatic before I get completely distracted. I don't want to sat down. I'm going to stand back up again. I'm going to join you this time. Yeah. It's, it's cozy up here. It's a little bit warm here today in Cologne, so excuse us if I'm going a little do lally. <laughs> Well, I mean, you were sick earlier in the week, too. I've been very sick this so. week, trust me. It's, it's not been a pleasant experience. But nevertheless, nobody wants to know about that. They want to know about what Fnatic are going to do to stop NIP's progress here on this middle turret. The answer is Naffor. <laughs> yeah, nothing at all. And I, was, I thought people were actually wondering, what did you leave in the stove if it left it off? <laughs> That's what I was thinking about. Um, but yeah, so they get a free turn off there. It's currently 2-1 to one in favor of Fnatic. They have a decent goal lead, but really, this game has been kind of calm. Not a lot of fights been breaking out. There's been a little bit of uh, skirmishes, but no one really getting heavily in favor of either side. No team fights really breaking out just yet. And I'm waiting for that point to come. Because, I mean, if you look at this, these two teams statistically, they're actually very even across the board in terms of who gets first blood, who gets first dragon, uh, actually at the times, I mean, sorry, who gets first baron, turrets, inhibitors. And it's kind of interesting to see that it's kind of playing out into this game where not a lot is really breaking out. Not, no, no team has a clear advantage just yet. So what you're saying is that's why we're watching uh, Push You Just Farming. Yes. 
Yes, I mean, it is, it is very entertaining to see a vein farm, though. I, I will give it that, because the silver bullets are like, how much damage is this one going to do? Yeah, a lot. A lot. <laughs> I guess it's the same with the piercing arrow, taking out a wave. But it looks like it's going to be Fnatic still going to continue pushing on towards this. But there's three members of Ninjas in Pajamas. They're going to get on towards Yellowstar. They do manage to slow him down. Good condemn there onto Maloon. It will slow him down, but Yellowstar is effectively a dead man. He gets massacred. It's Bjergsen that picks up yet another kill. 41 now, Bjergsen. And they are going to move their way up towards the mid lane, it seems. But not a great deal there. I think they're simply going to defend out and stop that push from once again. Oh, so no, as Ram Bjergsen... Oh, okay, he escapes the Q out of the side. I was waiting for that because Pushu was coming out from the side. And right now, they're actually going to engage on Ponix Peke. Chain of Corruption lands, Aqua Prism follows. Zoni's Hourglass is going to come out. Is it going to be enough with that slicing Maelstrom? Oh, they try and con uh, Cataclysm on towards him, and he flashed straight out of it. Peke does go down to the Ignite. Will it be enough now? Soaz getting caught out. Four members. Hail of Arrows does get the slowdown. He gets knocked up. It's another kill, and Mima takes it this time around. While that was all happening, the bottom turret was taken down as well by Bjergsen, and he's continuing his path of regime. I don't know what his path is, but he's slicing his well through the minions on the bottom. I don't even know anymore. I don't even know what you're saying right now, but NIP picking up those two kills, picking up that turret bottom. They're going to try to keep their aggression on. They have the goalie for the well, for the first time of the game, even though it's not that much. So a dragon can up in about 30 seconds. They know. So as his ultimate's not up. Xpeke's ultimate's not up just yet. It might be done in time for this dragon, but they could probably go for a major team fight here on this dragon, contest it, maybe take it, maybe take a couple of kills, and really start to snowball even harder. Well, red buff being given across to push you, and that's a 7-3 advantage for NIP. Big advantage in terms of turrets as well, because they've managed to take that uh, two bottom inner ones out. Two bottom inner ones? Outer and Sound inner. Sound like me last week. <laughs> I didn't know what's the going The bottom inner days. outer turret, right? It's, it's all the numbers. All the numbers are confusing me right now. <laughs> the main number that you need to worry about is the fact that it is a 1k gold advantage for NIP, and they are starting off on the dragon. The second dragon of the game for themselves, the third one in the actual match itself, and Freeze again. He landed that great chain of corruption earlier on. It is available in just a couple of seconds if they were wanted to go for that fight. And why is he? Everybody backs away for Nanit come in to try and reset the counter. Will they catch out Bjergsen? No, they won't. And something that I want to point out for NIP is that over the last two weeks, they've gotten two dragons total. They hold are currently on a minute. A whole of NIP stopped their back there. They want this fight. And they are going to defend this bottom out of turret. They're not going to give this one up for free to Fnatic. Fnatic were just coming in thinking, oh, we got a nice free fight here. Oh, so, so, so oh. it's ultimate's up. Oh, chain of corruption misses. So as he sat ready and waiting in the wins, I didn't think he's quite being as ninja-like as he thought because he, we just saw him pushing up to the turret. But now they realize and they see Peke coming down, catch him with a combo. Now they're gonna have to give up this turret. Yes, they are. They cannot fight against that damage as so as to put down because he has a Zonus. He was interrupted the entire game like you mentioned before. And right now, Mimer's coming from the side. He's gonna try to go for the ultimate. He's gonna launch himself in and he's gonna be let bouncing across. We're gonna see one Zonia's used. Peke gets that one down, throws out the charm. Not gonna quite land in the right target. Slicing Maelstrom does catch NIP off nicely. Bjergsen tries to get in the back line, catches on to push you, but gets taken down. That was great control from Fnatic. They're gonna get down Mimer as well. They pick up his globules, and it was a three for zero fight, including that tower they took down as well. It was a good, good exchange from Fnatic, considering it was Mimer that launched himself in the first place. And the thing was, his let's bounce didn't do anything. Like, he was not allowed to run around, even with the CC reduction he has on his ultimate. He was just locked down the entire time, was ineffective completely, and Fnatic taking the goalie back in their own hands. They're actually heading towards Baron right now. They... I'm not sure they can take it, but they might go for it. Actually, yeah, with Vayne coming in, I didn't see Pusher coming in from the backside. They're gonna go for this Baron. They're gonna force a fight to happen with 14 seconds on Mimer, 10 seconds on Bjergsen. It could be a free Baron. There's no wards really there as well from Ninjas in Pajamas. We can see, actually, it's a ping. Is there a ward underneath them? There may well be. It can't. Physically cannot put a ward no, under Baron anymore because he knocks anyone. it away. Yes, indeed. They changed that. But they just have a feeling that's coming in right now. Moon's coming from the side. He might try to go for the steal. Will he go? He's going in, but he's not going to get it. And he's going to get locked up instead. Throws out the Aqua Prison. Is it going to be enough to save him? No, it's not. He had no flash. He was pretty much doomed in there. It was worth a dive, though. But Fnatic pick up that Baron. And just like that, after a great team fight in the bottom, they have a huge advantage over NIP. Yes, they do. And that's just that's really unfortunate for NIP. But that's how quickly a game can snowball. Like that decision to back versus not backing. Look what it gave him. They gave Fnatic three kills, gave him a turret, gave him Baron, and pretty much anything they get right now off this Baron is included in that in that whole pool. And that is just really unfortunate for NIP right now, but they have the CC to lock down Fnatic. Like, they're not out just yet. They have a lot of damage behind them. 
It's just all about can they burst push you down? Can they keep expect a CC a little bit? Maybe gonna pop the Zonia so you won't be able to do anything during the fight. Sorry, I'm just smirking because I wasn't sure whether you actually put Get Right and NIP in there together on purpose or whether you just did that by accident. I'll take credit for it. Yeah, you'll take credit for that. You probably still don't know who the hell is, do you? CS player. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Bit of knowledge coming out here. Impressive stuff. Jurgsen's clearing out that top wave. He's going to wipe out the waves. He's going to push his way through like a destructive force. That's what he's There you do. go. Not a regime. It's destructive force. It's a regime. Or well, maybe he's laying down his regime. I don't know. He's a youngster. Maybe, maybe he's got different ideologies from the rest of the world. Who knows? <laughs> we won't go down that this path. It's a good though. day. This, this is a good day. This is going to be a long good day. I'm casting, I'm sure. So as in this middle lane, well, he's doing what he does best, and he's causing destructive paths of his own. <laughs> he's still causing destructive <laughs> paths of his own right now in that middle lane. So we have we have bottom lane claim for Bjergsen, mid lane claim for Soaz. Who's going to claim that top lane? <laughs> I do not know. It's the bottom lane right now. We're going to see who's going to claim that one. It's going to be Peke. Peke with his. Orbs of fury as he wards and walks away. <laughs> He's like, no, no demon. Just, no, I'm not gonna do this. Not today. But, not I mean, they today. have the, they have the bear muff. They want to go for friendless turret. They have the cannon ultimate available. They have every ultimate available right now to go in. They have a lot of summoners as well. And right now, at IP, when they're up against a bear muff fanatic, they cannot really afford to fight unless they get an engage that works out for them. Fanatic. On the other hand, they're looking to get straight in that. Throwing out that chump. Pearson keeps them at bait just for a little while. Not too sure how much longer he's going to be able to do that, though. He's really effectively the, the main driving force between NIP. And keeping Fnatic at bay. You can see the top and bottom wave are pretty much even. They're just going to push themselves in, honestly, neither direction at the moment because neither of them have been pushed. Someone's going to have to go out and deal with them all the siege. With this Baron buff from Fnatic, you give them the advantage ordinarily in this fight because of that Baron buff. Mima gets caught out with the hook. Not really the target they wanted, though. Do you see those silver bolts stacking up there? And he's down to half health already, which tells me he's not going to be able to launch himself in there and use that bounce because he's just going to get destroyed straight away. His passive will be back away, back up. There is Cell Division. But I don't think he's in any position to go aggressive right now. Considering though Fnatic has Baron, and NIP still defending this turret kind of shows the weakness in their composition. They can't siege that world. If they're going to go for a turret, they have to go for a fight on top of The hook's coming in. Not gonna land though, and Fnatic haven't really made anything happen off this uh, this Baron just yet. But look at bottom lane; that lane is pushing. Someone's gonna have to go clear it. It looks like that man's gonna be Bjergsen. He's gonna defend his regime in the bot lane. Yeah, as soon as he steps away, Fnatic are gonna see that and they're gonna make their move and go straight for that turret. You can see the walls being placed out there. Charm getting flung again. The pin goes down. Bjergsen is not here. Let's take the inner turret and just like that, Fnatic work that siege to their advantage and realizing the fact that Bjergsen's a long way away, they may be able to get themselves a second in the turret in the top lane. They do have Baron for actually a lot longer right now, so they definitely could go for it right now, but Mimer, who you know, took a lot of damage early on, he didn't actually go back and he was been dependent, or dependent. Actually, you see the engage, forget it. We're gonna see Jenna Corruption landing. Zonia's Hourglass comes straight out though. Doesn't catch the wave. Jenna Corruption does spread across the rest of Fnatic, and that keeps NIP holding that inner turret for a little bit longer. So finally, there are a couple of Zonyas, a lot of ultimates used. They do manage to hold on to those turrets desperately, desperately trying to keep them. And actually, they've done a very good job against the Baron of Fnatic. And now, now Baron has worn off, which is why Fnatic are going to step away. I was actually really surprised they decided to do that, considering they had Soas ultimate available still. They didn't have the Chain of Corruption or the uh, the Wave out of Nami to worry about on the other side. But they're just going to take their advantage right now, back away, and buy up. I mean, because they haven't really been back in a while. They have 1,300 gold right now on the Expect. They have 1,200 on Cyanide. And of course, another 1100 on to push you right now. They're actually gonna try to deny some buffs here, and Bjergsen, he got, he got it just barely. Well, Bjergsen heading back down to that bottom lane. Dragon will be picked up by Fnatic 4-3. This time around, no way that NIP are gonna contest this one, so I think that's the second Dragon for Fnatic. Maybe the third. Or a lovely graphics guy will well, let us know in a second. We will, we will get to know. I'm just going to wait for it to pop up. Now he's, he's questioning himself now. He's like, was that the second or the third? I'm not too sure. <laughs> and the casters don't know, then how will I know? <laughs> <laughs> how am I meant to know? I don't know. <laughs> he's confused. But nevertheless, that is going to be the red buff going across to Bushu. So let's check out the items, what these guys have been picking up. We can see that Peke actually put himself up as, as you would expect, being the number one killer in Manila. Or oh, it's not really in Manila, it's from... He's not, actually, he's not from Madrid. He's, he, I keep saying he's from Madrid, and he's not. He's from a, some area of Spain. <laughs> that narrows it down. So his items, though, as you were, as you were talking Back about. Back to his <laughs> items, nevertheless. He's going for the, the 
He's got the, the rich build. He's going for He's all, the, for the, all the, rich the New Zealand large items because he needs it. Well, he's definitely an exhibitionist, so he's all about the needlessly large items. You've seen his photos. This is how I LCS. I'm sure everybody at home has seen it as well. And they've also <laughs> seen him on Cyanide stream and, and every other place that, in fact, hell on our stream where he's flashing his chest. And Tenerife, which caught you off guard, I believe. Well, I mean, never mind. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that because we have farming going on right now, Demon. That's always <laughs> oh, exciting to watch. Yeah. Done. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I thought, what was I thinking? Let's get back to the farming, guys. Thinking about 40 seconds to Baron. This is intense right now because the wards are gopping going down. Deficio is absolutely decimating them. He's laid his regime down all over those wards right now, Demon. But that is another turret actually going over for NIP's side. So right now, with that Baron cover at 30 seconds, Fnatic got it for free last time because of the fight that happened at bottom. We have all ultimates available across the board right now. And this is honestly going to be a, a huge point for both these teams to fight for. Because we saw in that last game just how crazy a, a, a dragon or a Baron dance can be. And with the hook initiate out of Yellowstar, if he does land it, they land a charm right behind that. They're going to blow someone up right away. You know, what sort of dance would a Baron dance be? Would it be a tango, a waltz? What would you go going on there? A bit of salsa? He does a twerk. Bit of... <laughs> he twerks. Yeah, he twerks. I oh, was not aware that the Baron could twerk. Oh, you don't see the rest of his body, though, that's why. You just see his <laughs> Ah, that's what it is. Under the water, he's twerking. Oh, twerking no! away, but then he's going to get caught out. He gets melted. He didn't manage to twerk, so has caught him out and stunned him. And that's what we're talking about with that hook. If you land that hook, follow up with a charm, you're going to kill someone right away. And that was the smiter for NIP. This should be, should be a free ban for Fnatic. But NIP, they're going to try to fight this here. Wow, a freeze! Slicing Maelstrom, ripping apart ninjas in pajamas there from Soas. He gets in amongst the whole of NIP along with Peke. And that's just like that is how quick the team went down. Pushu managed to get the GA. I didn't see him actually pick up that item, but sure enough, the GA works. He saves himself. Bjergsen got on him. Reset that GA, but that doesn't matter because Fnatic will get themselves the Baron, and that may give them possibly the game. Yeah, that is huge for them because we saw earlier, like, they were a little bit hesitant to engage under that second middle turret, but now with another Baron, with ridiculous items that they now have, they should be able to do it a lot easier. They should be able to make that fight happen. However, at least for NIP's sake, they got the, the GA off of Pushu. That is huge, because now Bjergsen, he still can pretty much 1v1 him if he does get his full combo onto him. He can blow him up, and that is a lot of damage gone for Fnatic. Though, if he does get charmed or CC in any, uh, in, in any form, he's just going to blow up himself. He's swerking towards the GA, but it's not done yet. The issue was that Soaz and Peke got into the back line and basically killed all of NIP. So while he may take down the AD carry, he's going to lose the rest of his team to go with it. And now that they have Baron, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what the items were meant for, like that GA. Mm. Like he, I mean, you're vain. You don't need anything past a uh, Blade of the Rune King and a Fennet Dancer, but because both your AP carries have a GA, you know you're the target from his Ed. And with his GA up, which he previously had not anymore, obviously, then it kind of defers him away from you. It kind of makes him rethink, should I go for him or should I just go for someone that's in proximity to me as Zed and then try to make them Zonia so we can just blow them up right after? Well, Peke and Soaz have got some more swag. They've got their party items on, two Rabadon's death caps on their heads and they're ready to go dancing and it seems that they are looking like they're going to make their way in the mid lane here because you see that Cyanide is leading the charge. He's got his minions with him. He's just saying, where's everyone else, guys? Get up here. <laughs> so is his in his Team? dancing gear. Guys, guys, where are you? They're hitting the club. See, look, see, he's ready. So as if you know so as he's the little Frenchie. He likes to party. He likes to, likes to go clubbing and it seems that Nobody else wants to go win because they've all gone off to the bottom lane and ignored him. He's like, guys, 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 <laughs> come here. Where are you? And Yellow Star's like, no, no. no, no. Oh, God. I stayed, I stayed on the bottom your French lane. accent? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Anyway, so Fnatic, they're hitting bottom. It seems they're, they're going, going for, for the bottom. They, they're ignoring Soaz. They don't want to go partying with him. And look what NAP has, actually. So Bjergsen, he has an Oracle. Not just to clear wards, but for freeze, or not for freeze, for push you particularly, because obviously when Vayne stealths, or when ultimates and then tumbles, you stealth up, and he wants to be able to spot him the entire time. X Peke, he's on stun up, he's staying on top of wards, NIP, they just have to get this up. If they stay longer, they could get caught. Well, they didn't. They didn't back to away. <laughs> nope, they didn't, Jason. You're wrong. No, no. It was a good build up, a good bit of hype, but it wasn't going to happen. They decided to step away from that one, and it seems that they may just. Try and seize just one out. Now they're going to go to mid. That, that was interesting. Did you see how much gold they got for the ward? 23 went to Deficio, 8 went to Bjergsen because of the changes in 3.9. If, you if you're giving the vision, you get a credit of the ward kill. Mm. Huh. Delightful. Yeah. It's a little tidbit in there for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Little did you know. 
today, I learned. <laughs> but it's the mid lane, and now the top, actually. They're going to do it by the numbers, guys. They're going to do it by the numbers, Fnatic. They want to take all of the outer and inner turrets. And just like you learn with Ash in the tutorial, this is what you've got to do. You've got to take out all the turrets one by one by one and then work your way in. Well, I mean, we have to, we have to re pretty much reiterate why. Because right now, what is on the line, Demon? Like, there is so much of these teams' world finals right now with the, the standing so close. Every team wants to pick up everyone, everyone they possibly can. Oh, and going. we do see an engage. They're going straight in. Chain of Corruption lands on Yellowstar, but focusing all your attention on Yellowstar, not really what you want to do, because Soaz with his slicing Maelstrom, he gets in there, pops the Zonia's Hourglass just as the Pierce and Arrow comes in, and just like that, Peke joins the fight. He comes around. Mima getting locked up here. He's going to come around the side. Bjergsen and Bushu already are down, but nevertheless, that's going to be Mima going down as well, and Fnatic going to come out two for one. That's not a bad fight for an IP considering they're up against a Baron fight, but it's an interesting engagement. They saw Peke was away from the fight, and they went for it, but it seemed to have backfired. Yeah, I mean, Bjergsen, he got into the backside. He 1v1 push you, but it obviously is just not enough. Once X Peke gets there, his damage is just through the roof. Look at his items. Three of the large rod items right now. He's really hard to deal with, and then he's going to burst you, and then just zone you to stay alive. And right now, Fnatic even trying to go for a little bit of split push here, because they know with B without Bjergsen up, they're not too worried about the rest of the team. But for a two for one, they lost the inner turret, which probably they were going to do anyway. The Baron's now off Fnatic, and they've killed all the inhibitor turrets. So, technically, it's a bit of a win situation for an IP there. I mean, they're, what, they're nearly 10,000 gold behind. They are falling desperately out of this one, but they've still got all the inhibitor turrets. It's not over yet for them. Yeah, I mean, it's actually right now, I was doing the stats over the weekend. It's gone up for, actually, when the first inhibitor's taken, 93% of the teams originally when the start of the summer split would would, or would win the game. But right now, in the summer split, it's actually gone up. So if you take the first inhibitor, or the teams that take the first inhibitor have won 94.7% of the game. So it's actually gone up quite a bit, which you think, you know, 1.2%, or not that much. But in terms of how you win in the end, it's huge. That's a big, big point, void. Shows that maybe teams can't swing it back like they used to, but Fnatic at the moment, or simply put, teams don't push it for the base until they know they've got full control, which seems to be the way here for Fnatic. They feel they've got full control. They've taken down their third dragon of the game, and that's put them nearly well, over 10,000 ahead. <laughs> they were trying to be sneaky, and then they walked into a ward. I just realized. So the first Baron, they got one turret bottom, or they got one turret middle. Second Baron, they got one turret top. So we might potentially. See another five Baron. more barons. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Just throwing it out there. If it might happen. Fortitude pop being picked up by Cyanide though. So he's thinking, is he tanky enough to try and take on this turret? He has got that Radiant Zoman and the Aegis Legion. Didn't go for the uh, the Rabadon's death cap yet though. He's had that Aegis for a very long time. He hasn't stepped it into it because really there's not enough magical to. damage to yeah. really warrant it. That's actually a smart play. You know, might spend that extra 800 gold, build it into another item. And right now we have Pushu's GA available. We have Xpeke picking up a GA. So he, if he didn't have enough armor already, he's going to be sitting at 206. Wow. On an, on an AP carry, 206, where Bjergsen was trying to go from to burst him down, that is going to be so hard for Freeze, who honestly, he didn't do bad in lane, but just in terms of items, in terms of scaling, he's not going to be doing that much damage to Xpeke now. Well, it's a serious problem for NIP, not so much a problem for Fnatic. So Fnatic looking very good for this one. Baron is up in 40 seconds. That almost certainly will be the next focus target as everybody flexes and stretches as they go back to base. And they do all start buying items. A bunch of blasting ones coming out for Fnatic this time around. Maybe they've got a whole new party regime planned out for the Baron this time around. It's a bit of a... Uh, a snazzy number, I feel. A bit of baton twirling you know, is going to be involved. So I was just like, all right, if you want to go club me, clubbing with me, I'll bring the club to us. Yeah. I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> but I'm actually okay. wondering, are we going to see an Abyssal Scepter come out? Because obviously both these AP carriers will benefit from that. Yeah, like you mentioned earlier, there's not a lot of magic damage on NFP's side, but the extra penetration you get from it is pretty strong. However, we might just see two Void Stats because they do have a Runic Bulwark on NFP's side. So, let's see how the baton twirling works out for Fnatic here. They've got a number lined up for Fnatic, for NIP. NIP may well walk straight into this one. Mime is going to get caught out. They dive straight on him. He wasn't too happy with that. It wasn't the number he was looking for. He gets his passive pop. Oh, good chain of corruption landing out there. Is it going to be enough, though? You see Fnatic all locked up on the Baron. Push is taken very low. Is actually the Baron tanking on towards him. Cyanide's getting caught out in the back there. The Baron's going to turn back on towards him. Cyanide will get taken down surely. Peke takes down Mima. Look at Cyanide's on nothing. 
there's NIP looking for the kill here. Can they pop the Guardian Angel of Peke? He's gonna get popped, is he will be enough? No, Sawaz now with his onions, he gets taken down. Maluna turn on nothing, Pushu comes in. Pushu could clean up, but no, he gets his Guardian Angels popped. He did manage to get another kill on Maluno. The rest of the team coming in to help out. Yellowstar is gonna try and throw anything onto Freeze. If he can lock him up, Pushu will be able to life steal his way back into this one. No, he steps away and a very, very tight fight between them. A lot of GA is popped there, but look at Peke, he kept his GA. He didn't quite go down to Bjergsen. But that was still a fantastic engager there because they got the J off of Pushu. If they can get back in time and defend against this Baron, then they'll be in a really good position because then they'll be able to burst Pushu out. They'll be able to do some good damage to Expect and actually could turn a fight around, but they had to defend this Baron. They cannot let them get it for free. Bjergsen doesn't have home guard boots. He won't be there to stop it. It looks like NIP, they're just going to give it away. Yeah, Fnatic are going to get this one. They'd force Bjergsen out of the fight and they realize that they have enough life steal. Pushu just simply draining the life off Baron there. And it will be Fnatic with their third Baron of the game. And that means that they're going to take another turret. Hopefully more than one. Hopefully more than one. Potentially more than one. Because it'll be a big one. It'll be an inhibitor turret going down and maybe an inhibitor if we're lucky. And that will give them such a huge advantage. And right now it's just NIP. What can they do? They've been going for engages against a Baronet Fnatic two times now, I believe it was. And they didn't come out too strong in each of those, but now they're defending the inhibitor turrets. If they were willing to fight that hard over the outer inner turrets, that makes no sense, the inner turrets, then they're going to go even harder on these inhibitors. And with the GA down, they have the possibility of doing it. Let's see what it works out for them. So as churns out this bottom wave, looks like the mid wave, and the top wave is pushing itself, actually. Bjergs is going to try and clear that one out. So we'll see which direction Fnatic choose to go. It's almost certainly going to be one of the inhibitor turrets, just which one they chose. Will it be two? They generally go for the split push pass path, Fnatic, they which is their though. path That's... of destruction, but they can't. Yeah, yeah. Like say. they don't really have a great lineup for that. I mean, expect a, he can obviously escape, so I wouldn't be too worried about that. But if they get engaged upon without expect a there, there goes a lot of their damage. If so, I split pushes, there goes a lot of their control in these fights. So they need everyone there. They have to go for it, looks like, and engage on this turret. And if they can just catch one person with a charm, just one charm, that's all it takes, one hook, then you're going to win that fight under the turret. Oh, the oh, charm the on Deficio, and he just gets melted straight away. Peke actually uses ultimate to get in on that one. Bjergsen's son ready and waiting to go, but look at that turret. It's already below half health. And they're just putting a couple of shots on towards it. Chain of Corruption lands on towards Yellowstar. Let's bounce comes in. Fnatic getting caught out. Pushu does go down very quickly. Can Bjergsen get on towards him? Soas hasn't used that Zonia's Algas, and frankly does not need to. Now he does. Slicing Mershon's done the job, though. And just like that, NIP dropping like flies. Three members already down. The rest of Fnatic have the minions coming in with them. They will take the first inhibitor turret of the game, and the inhibitor will follow. They could pass. No, they're not going to go for that. They're going to play it like by the books or by the numbers. I was going to say they could possibly go they for it. They got to get another Baron yet. Wait, I... <laughs> why, why, why do I even think that? Wow, you're completely right. <laughs> Crazy thing. I know, but I was thinking they could possibly go for it, but no need to. Not when you're in this. In, in this Comfortable position, 14,000 gold up, 46 minutes in, 7 of 4 turrets, you have the middle inhibitor down, you're going to have super minions pushing down that wave, you can just go for bottom and just wait for the rest of your team to respawn. Oh, yeah, Bjergsen not falling for that trap there, Yellowstar already throwing out the death sentence and not quite catching it, he had a good look, realized that the blue buff was not safe grounds to walk towards and Peke will be taking that one away, and the dragon, just to be safe. Making sure they get every little bit of gold. That's going to be 15,000 gold. Magic to your ears there, Jason. <laughs> what? Yes, it is Magic Demon. Thank you for that. It was like, ooh, money. But anyways, right now, we have the Oracle on, on the Fisa just playing out some wards to try to get that vision in their own side of the jungle. Sorry, I'm like crying right now. Ooh. Uh, and Pushu's gonna pick up his own red buff here. So he's pretty much almost full item built. He's sitting on 9 to go right now, so he's not gonna have that final item done just yet. <laughs> Sorry. I went there. Uh, nevertheless. Okay, so as backing up top lane. Amazing stuff. Let's get back onto this one. Because Fnatic in full control and looking. Oh, Bjergsen getting caught out with the charm. Actually, Peke putting a lot of damage. He's gonna go full on aggression. One more shot will do it. He tries to turn it back around, but Bjergsen taken down already. Pushu on vain, getting caught out once again. He gets locked up. Mima throwing his tentacles everywhere and does manage to take him down with Let's Bounce. Tries to launch himself. Not gonna get caught out mid flow by Yellowstar. The hook was not there, but nevertheless, it is a one for one. An 80 carry for a mid laner, but look at Soaz. He's cleared out that top wave, and the rest of Fnatic now going to come up.
Peke, meanwhile, he's going down towards the bottom inhibitor, which is completely exposed right now, and there's going to have to give up another turret. I think is the trade in the end wasn't worth it for NIP. Yeah, you did get the AD carry down, but he wasn't the threat. It wasn't him. It was all about Xpeke, all about Soaz. And Bjergsen, he is the major threat on NIP's side. And with him down, Fnatic can feel confident to split push like this. And you see, that's the turret down. Maluno getting hooked in there by Yellowstar. Not really the target they wanted, but nevertheless, the turret goes down. Inhibitor is next. And Fnatic are working the way in this one. Halo of Arrow is trying to slow there. Path trying to slow them down a little bit. The charm lands on towards Mime and he just gets melted. Look how quickly he goes down. Cyanide catches on towards him. Of course, it's that cell division, but Maluno coming around the side. He just gets hooked up and completely chop job by Yellowstar. Actually, just holds him straight down. Triple kill picked up by Yellowstar. Uh, sorry, Peke, can he finish this one off? No. Maluno, where are you going? It doesn't matter. Your base is going to go. He's going to back off. And Fnatic will be taking victory here against Ninjas in pajamas, but <laughs> not quite yet because Bjergsen's coming in. To try and pad out that KDA. He just managed to get another kill, but he has to slide away from that one. Fnatic will win this one though. 23 12 overall, 9 4 in terms of turrets. It took them a while, 50 minutes, but sure enough, Fnatic get themselves a solid, solid victory here against NOP. We said at the start how tough the games are against NOP for Fnatic, and again, it proved that way. And just look at the sweaty faces of Fnatic. They have worked very hard for that match. Yeah, they did, but they played it so well, and it doesn't matter if you win in 50 minutes, 150 minutes, or five minutes. Winning is all that really counts at this point with how close these standings are, and Fnatic, they're trying to hold the position. Just like you said in the, uh, before the game started, they are the spring champions. We cannot forget about that, and to go into the summer split and not get anywhere near the top two, or at least not get first place, would be terrible for them. It would not be ideal. Well, it puts them back on par with alternate, and of course, one game away from Lemon Dogs. This is what they needed to do. They had to keep the wins going, and they had to keep stacking them up. So <laughs> he's they have again. managed to chase. Peke just can't stop exposing himself on camera, it has to be said. Giving Deficio a little bit of flash there. Just like, you want some of this? That's, that's kind of like a French Spanish. I'm not sure where I was going with that one. Peke would be happy with it, though. I was trying to think how to combine those two words, Spanish and French, but I couldn't do it.